Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel and in this video we will talk about two problems from Decode. These are Recode 62 and 63. The title of these problems are Unique Path. There are three problems in this, uh, in this series but I will have a separate video for the last problem. So let's take a look at these problems. Here is the first problem. Here is the second problem. Before we look at my solution together, I want you guys to try to come up with your own solution for these two problems. They are, I don't think they are that difficult. So here is the solution for 62. I have three approaches for this problem. If you look at this one, well, the first thing that should come to your mind is, so to go from here to here and to count how many unique paths we, in, we have, the thing that should come to our mind is we use recursion and then Every time we reach that this end point, we return one, and then we go all the way back up to our you know initial position. So in other words, something like this, we have a recursion going on here, right? So we start from zero comma zero. When i and j are equal to like the coordinate of this point, then we return one. Otherwise, we return zero. So when i is actually in this case. We, can, we will not have i is less than 0 nor j is less than 0 because if you look at this one we are always incrementing right we are incrementing i it is either i stays the same or i is incremented by 1 same for j j either stays the same or j is incremented by 1 so like this part i made a typo here so it should be just i is greater than or equal to m or j is greater than or equal to n in that case we return 0 because that means we are like in this like outside of the boundary so something like here here so in that case we just return zero if that's not the case we have to run our this find path function recursively so meaning that if we start from zero comma zero then we have to go to this guy there will be one comma zero that's given by this so we have find path of one comma zero plus we can go to the right so there will be zero comma one and then you keep doing that and then once we hit this point we will return one and then we will go all the way back up to this function find path of zero comma zero and then that will give us the answer however this approach is very slow how should we improve this if you have seen fibonacci problem like that's that typical you know that's the first thing you learn in dynamic programming not only do we have suboptimal structure in this problem we also have overlapping sub problems that should ring a bell to your head that aha we should use memoization or you know memoization is like you know top down approach or we can use bottom up approach so using memoization we will store all the data we will have something like this again forget about this i comma i is less than zero or j is less than zero so when i is equal to n minus one j is equal to n minus one we return one if we are outside of the boundary then we return zero if i comma j is in our memoization like this will be our dictionary then we return this guy this means on other way of saying this is if i comma j is in memoization that means we already have seen this i comma j before so we will be so this is just you know like we already have seen like this sub problem before so we just return this guy otherwise we have to find this right so same here find path i plus one comma j and then find path i comma j plus one and then we return this guy right we set that equal to five we set this guy sum of these two equal to memo memoization of i comma j and then we return this so that's memoization approach or that's also top down approach and you can use bottom up approach in this case we have we just create dynamic programming like two dimensional dp table and then we initialize this guy we run our dp from i from 1 to m so there will be 1 to m minus 1 from j to from for j from 1 to n minus 1 and then we keep updating this and then we return the we return this one dp of m minus 1 and n minus 1 so that's problem 62 and for problem 63 it's a little bit involved but still the same thing i think so i hear dp of i comma s is just the number of possible unique path from 0 comma 0 to i comma s in this case dp of 0 comma 0 is equal to 1 so we start from here and we want to end at this guy 
here we have a green tile that means like these are like stones that just block so you cannot like go through here so there will be so this one will block the path uh, so how should we do this well same concept we create this dp table and we so this is our dp table this one is in this our 0 comma 0 is initialized to be 1 now we keep we run this so we it's same here so from here to here well you only have one path one one and notice that we encounter this right so in this case obstacle grid at 0 comma 4 is 1 if it is equal to 1 here we put some like some number like you can put like negative infinity or you know I put this um like some string you can put it here and then we move on if now you well for this guy well because this one is you there is no way to reach this guy right you we don't have a we don't have an option to go up so this one is zero and we look at the next row we have one right and then these two will, this guy will be from some of these two and then this one will be some of this guy and this guy so we do this and then here well this is there's nothing you can do so we, we just this this one will be purely from this guy and then same here we have 0 plus 4 is 4 and then we you do this and so this is my code for this basically if i is greater than 0 then we check we check if the previous row and having and fixing the column position if that is equal to this like string then we don't do anything otherwise we add that guy so that's what's going on here so if you look at this one well dp of 0 comma 4 is this guy so we don't do anything and then we check this one we and we check the next one since j is greater than 0 and if this guy is not if this is not equal to this guy then we we update our dp of 1 comma 4 by this, this one and then we you keep doing this and we return this the last entry of our dp and that should be it so that's for this problem and let's look at the code for problem 62 this is my code for this problem exactly the same code that you just saw on my slide and let's run this okay so that's for this problem and let's run the next problem that's this so that is problem 63 and let's try to run this that's for these two problems and for the next video i will talk about the third problem in this unique path series that one is a little bit difficult but it's still the same concept and you can try that problem on your own before we look at my solution together uh, that's for this video and if my video helps you guys understanding <laughs> more dp problems please give me thumbs up and subscribe to my youtube channel and i will talk about numerical linear algebra next time too um, i'll be making some slides and i think i'm fairly ready for that but i'm so excited to you know talk about numerical linear algebra with you guys so hope you guys um have a great evening and i'll see you next time Bye bye